Hello, everybody. My name is Valeria Pervashina, and today I'm going to be presenting you on our stand back module, Optional Stopping Problem in Pairs Trading. A little bit of introduction. I'm a researcher at Hudson and Teams and also a master's student in the QF program at the University of Warsaw. My social media handles are also presented here down below. I would like to note that the following implementation and theoretical information closely follow the work of Professor Tim Lee in optimal mean reversion trading, mathematical analysis, and practical application. So without further ado, let's start the presentation. Part one, theoretical background. We start with mean reversion, the quality of a process that stands for its tendency to revert to a long-term mean with the passage of time, as you see on the picture example on this slide. It's widely known that some asset prices are naturally mean reverting processes like commodities prices, some foreign exchange rates, volatility indices, equities. Also, mean reverting processes are used to model interest rates and default risk. But the amount of natural mean reverting processes are pre is pretty limited. And to overcome this constraint, we move to pairs trading. The goal of pairs trading is to create a spread that emulates the behavior of a mean reverting asset. So our solution to achieve this goal is first to choose a pair of correlated or moving assets, like you see on the screen. We've chosen gold and GDX indices as our exemplary data. And then we long alpha amount of the first asset and short beta amount of the second asset to achieve so-called optimal mean reverting portfolio. The goodness of mean reversion is defined by the ratio between asset A and asset B. So how do we find this optimal ratio? Here comes the Ollenstein Ollenbeck process. It is widely known to model various mean reverting processes from physics to interest rates. It's everywhere, basically. And here it is the SD that establishes our Ornstein Ollenbeck process. The parameters we need to look out for is theta, long term mean, mu, mean reversion speed, and sigma amplitude of randomness in the system. And then we need to fit the OU model to our data and also find an optimal mean reverting portfolio. How do we do that? The first step would be to fit the model by maximizing the average log likelihood function with respect to its parameters theta, mu, and sigma. Then, we proceed to find the optimal portfolio, enhance the optimal ratio between assets by setting alpha as constant value and varying B to choose such beta that maximizes our max, already maximum average log likelihood function. Pretty easy, huh? And then we come to the question of the strategy that we want to use on this mean reversion spread. The main strategy is pretty simple, buy low, sell high. But the question is when exactly to enter the market or when exactly to liquidate the position? Is it optimal to wait? Is it optimal to perform your actions immediately? And here comes the optimal stopping problem with its answer. Suppose the investor already has a position with a value process X that follows the OU process. After close, closing the position at time t, he receives the value x tau and pays constant transaction cost t. To maximize the expected discounted liquidation value, we need to solve the optimal stopping problem. So basically, we're maximizing the expected value of the difference between the value we received while closing the position and transaction cost. Naturally, the future optimal value of liquidation, VXV, minus current price and transaction costs, C, constitute the cost of entering the trade. 
To maximize the expected discounted value of entry, we need to solve the second optimal stopping problem that looks like so. Also, some investors would like to add the stop loss level L. If the price of a portfolio will ever reach this level, the deposition will be closed immediately. Then the problem is reformulated the following way. So what's the desired result that we're getting? We have our two default optimal levels in the case of default problem. And our incentive is to buy as soon as we reach the optimal entry level and sell as soon as you reach the optimal liquidation level. Our model is targeted to one-time and to one-time exit model. So it is created to be a building block in some more complex trading strategies. But let's continue to the optimal stopping problem with the inclusion of stop loss. Here, our incentive is a little bit different. We buy as soon as we reach the bound of the optimal entry interval, and then we sell as soon as we reach the optimal liquidation level. But to get those results, to get our optimal levels, we need to proceed to the second part of our presentation, module functionality. Our optimal mean reversion module constitutes of three parts. Austin Uhlenbeck model, exponential Austin Uhlenbeck model, and Cox and Tibros Ross, respective to the chapters in the book of Professor Lee. Today we'll focus only on Ornstein Uhlenbeck process and Ornstein Uhlenbeck sum module. The goals that were set before us while starting implementing the module was to first create the optimal mean reversion portfolio, then find a way to fit Ornstein Uhlenbeck model to given data find the optimal entry and liquidation levels, showcase the results, and also add some functions for further process uh, researches that include OU processes. Needless to say, we've achieved all of our goals, and I present to you the introduction to the model. The first part of it would be the global variables. We can logically divide the global variables into three parts. First part is OU model parameters with long-term mean, mean reversion speed, amplitude of randomness, delta between observations, optimal ratio between two assets, and maximum log likelihood parameters. Then go parameters that are used in optimal stopping problem as transaction costs, discount rates, stop loss level, entry levels, and liquidation levels. The last part would be the parameters that are describing the training data. First would be the data itself that is provided by the user. And second, the specified training period that are used for current training of the model. What's most important is how the user interacts with our model. So I present to you the OU model usage cycle. The first step would be the model fitting. When we, the user provides the data into the model, it fits it to get the best possible optimal mean reverting portfolio and fit the OU model as exactly as it can. To. Then we proceed to optimal levels calculation, then onto data visualization, and after that model retraining, if you would wish to continue using the, the model, after you've achieved your goal in finding optimal levels. And after that, the cycle can repeat itself infinite amount of times. So let's look deeper into our cycle and into the parts of our cycle. The first would be the model thing. In the model fitting stage, we use fit function to do three tasks. First, set all the parameters for the optimal stopping problem. Second, to find the optimal portfolio ratio, and third, fit the OU model to the optimal portfolio. We might the, find the optimal portfolio ratio step as optional because it is possible for the user to provide already created mean reverting portfolio in a shape of a single time series of prices. But nevertheless, 
uh, we use our data of golden GDX index to create an optimal mean reverting portfolio and fit our model to it with the regular fit function. Also, I'd like to mention that if you provide a fundus data frame as a data, input data into the model, you have the ability to specify the training period that you would like to use while training your model. And obviously, if we were chosen this shorter period, it will have given us the different results. Also, the main question is how well the OU model fits the data, really, because you can provide any type of data and the model will fit it at least somehow. But how to determine the goodness of a fit? To find that, we're using the check fit function. During the check fit stage, it is important that your simulated maximum average log likelihood function has to be called close to a fitted one. And if, if the simulated maximum log likelihood is much greater, it means that your, the data that you provided to the model is not good enough, if maybe even unusable, um, the further, for further proceedings, you need to maybe reconsider your data choice. However, let's continue to the optimal level of calculation. To calculate the optimal levels, we've implemented four separate functions, optimal liquidation level, optimal entry level, optimal liquidation level with a stop loss, optimal entry interval stop loss. We can call all of these functions by themselves. And also there is a parameter check function implemented inside of the model that check how well the parameters of the fit and model and the provider parameters provided by the user fit into the finding the solution of the optimal stopping problem with the stop loss level. If your parameters are not suitable for finding the solution, the, the model will give you a warning with suggestion to change the parameters to a more fitting ones. However, implementing those type of functions, we get, we have uh, these results that you can have on the screen right now. Next, our next possible step will be the model retraining, the data visualization. We can visualize results in two ways. First, plot the optimal levels on the given data of choice with plot levels, and you will achieve the results similar to what you've seen before in this presentation. And second, you can print all the parameters associated with our fitted model with description function. You have your training period, all the parameters of the OU model, fitting error, and all the optimal levels mentioned in the description function output. The next possible step would be the model retraining. You can always retrain the model using following functions, such as fit to assets and fit to portfolio. Also, there is a possibility to change the parameters related to the optimal stopping along the way. As a basic way, we will try to retrain the model with the different training data set. And we have the following results. Also, as we change our stop loss to none, all the outputs for the function that include stop loss level in the calculations will not be outputted. As a second way to retrain the data, we can just use the different time interval, training time interval from already provided data and achieve a result like so. The next, like the next part of the presentation is a small addition to the module that will allow further research with the usage of the OU process. The first function would be OU model simulation. It generates the synthetic OU process data and it can generate it two ways. The first way, if you don't specify your own parameters, it will choose the parameters of already fitted OU process to your given data as a, uh, 
parameters to use to simulate the number of values that you would like to get. The second way is to set all the parameters of the OU model by yourself and get your custom OU process ready. Half-life function also returns the half-life characteristic of the fitted OU process. To sum up everything about the module, we will list all the public functions that available for the user. In model fitting and retraining, it's fit, optimal coefficients, fit to portfolio, fit to asset and check fit function. In optimal stopping problem part, it's expected discounted value of liquidation, optimal liquidation level, optimal entry level, expected discounted value of liquidation for the problem with the stop loss, optimal liquidation level with stop loss, optimal entry interval with a stop loss. For visualization and description, it would be the description function and plot levels respectively. And the additional functionality would be the OU model simulation and the halfway function. If you have any questions, please ask me. I would be happy to answer them. Thank you for your attention.